may be the welcome in all ways, on all days, I bid you welcome. Today we explore yet another concept, one that is dear to almost everyone, including my own sentience, that seeks, that desires, that explores. And it is the concept, it is the idea of wisdom. Where is wisdom kept? Where does it live? How does one access it? How to keep it? How to use it, employ it, share it, teach it? Wisdom is near and dear to every being, to every culture, to every world, on every planet, every star and celestial body, every heart and mind, from those that are most innocent to those that seek within the depths of their own being, wish to know, to become wisdom. But we must know what it is in order to explore the subject as well. Wisdom is not intelligence. One that is smarter than another is not necessarily more wise. If there was, for instance, a world full of wisdom, that would not necessarily mean that all the beings upon that world were also wise. So a wise man and a keeper of wisdom, for instance, are also uniquely different. And we will explore some of the nuances associated with this important subject. To begin with, we could say a simple Gaia axiom, which is to say that wisdom is what is left when information tires, when knowledge rests. That is wisdom. There are many different ways to acquire or partake wisdom. For instance, reflection. One can reflect upon life or within life, and this is called a noble tradition. In fact, under certain followings, well, reflection is the noblest of all pursuits or all journeys. The simplest could be called imitation then. Well, if one could simply imitate what a wise being is or does or has, if it could simply be acquired that way, well, it would be considered the easiest, if indeed it were possible. Of all of the different ways, the most bitter sweet is that of experience. It is the path of discovery, natural knowing, acquiring wisdom by one's own pursuits, by the rights and the wrongs, the twists and the turns of life. It is another way. In order to truly become wise, one must have a love of learning. For the noblest path to wisdom is to learn and to become, and to learn and to become, and to share and to teach and to learn again. It is to be the true student of life, the consummate student who learns and thereby becomes wisdom. In this case, one does not choose wisdom, and wisdom does not choose one. Here they are mated or destined in this case. Wisdom is not goodness. It is not the ability to be so good at life or with life. It is not to be so good so that there is no badness left that one becomes wise in the process. Oh no, one could be very, very kind in heart, very good to oneself and to others, benevolent and offering many pursuits of charity for others, and this would not necessarily give one 
wisdom. Wisdom is not knowledge or understanding, and yet if these are to be combined in very unique measures along with experience, yes, they would lead to wisdom. But how much? How much wisdom could one attain? So wisdom is not everlasting. It belongs to the moment. So that even one that acquired great knowledge and a great understanding about life and everything that life offered, it would lead, yes, through the eye of the needle or to wisdom. And there again, at the fountainhead or at the path where wisdom leads, one must know even then how to be with wisdom, what to do with wisdom, how to partake of it, share of it. Wisdom, then, is part of a journey. Without undertaking some kind of journey, it is more difficult to find it. Yes, you would stumble upon it here and there. You would see wisdom at work. You would see wisdom teaching itself to others. You would see it dispersed here and there in all of the kingdoms of nature, in places near and far, within and without. You would see wisdom at work. You would see its seeds being planted. You would see it growing tall. But you would not necessarily know, even from that, how to eat it, how to drink of it, how to keep it or digest it. So wisdom then, part of the journey, but even by knowing what is right from what is wrong, well, that would gain one knowledge, certainly, and again, temporary access to wisdom or the halls of wisdom, or the greater halls where truth is kept. But wisdom and truth, be they neighbors, are not necessarily one and the same. Those who begin to approximate the understanding of wisdom know that it is cause rather than effect that teaches one about wisdom or how to hold it. It is the causation of life that one becomes in the process and finds wisdom as a by-product of that. In order to understand cause and not be at the effect of all things, one must learn to presuppose rather than predispose. Predisposition is knowledge of how to work with the effects of things. In other ways, understanding that one certain cause will create a certain effect one could predispose oneself toward that effect, know how to work with that, and that knowledge would lead to a small amount of wisdom. However, truly understanding the laws of cause before they engage the principles of effect, one could learn to presuppose the very laws of cause or causation, thereby shortening the process and calling upon certain wisdom that one could use in that process. One can acquire knowledge in that way, but wisdom cannot be kept. One can promote wisdom, share wisdom at times, but imagine, simply because you share wisdom learned or attained does not mean that the next one will be able to receive it that way. For instance, you may share at great price a pearl of wisdom for another, and perhaps they would receive it as only a piece of information. For that is all that they would be able to do. So you see, one must gain right to wisdom 
It is an access. One must be able to access the holes and the codes of wisdom. It is a language. And without knowing how to hear that language, neither can it be spoken. And even the attempt to share it would be falling upon deaf ears, as it is said. In order to attain greater wisdom, one must understand the principles of its value. One must be able to value wisdom for what it is. Simply because one becomes wise in one subject does not mean that wisdom would also reveal its secrets in another area of life. So wisdom exists as we begin to see as we explore. Wisdom is. Wisdom comes. It goes. It becomes. And it befalls those who attain it, even momentarily. And even that, at times, at great risk or at great folly. So another path to wisdom is to uphold all of the principles that have value in life. And for each one, that is also a process of discovery. Principles of value are like pillars. They are like gates. One can see them at a distance and understand that there will come a moment where one will pass by or pass through the gate of wisdom, the pillars of understanding. And as you well know, the tree of life, the Kabbalah itself, is based upon these principles of truth and value. And without first discovering these, attaining these, becoming these, embodying them, there is no other true way to wisdom. Now, not all are seekers of wisdom. But of course, that is not the purpose of this discussion. It is not our purpose to determine who is worthy of wisdom. And here I tell you that you would be surprised by and by. Were we to measure one by one upon the earth, molecule by molecule, cell by cell, atom by atom, I tell you that you would be indeed surprised at who are carriers of wisdom and who are not. Do not make the mistake of folly of determining that those who are learned men or those who hold high position or even those who have access to the great secrets of life itself, to the great mysteries of life, even this does not say to you who is wise or who possesses wisdom. For you see, in some ways, wisdom, in fact, cannot be possessed at all. It is best put that it can be accessed, that it can be visited upon you, that you can dress yourself in its garment temporarily and there behold it and behold its effects upon you as cause. Wisdom in all its ways, in all of its expressions, this I tell you, is worthwhile. It is one of the most noblest pursuits on the earth and on other worlds. Like the pursuit of love and compassion, the pursuit of wisdom is one that ever dresses one evenly in light, in truth. It opens doors, doors without end, doors to the higher and the greater. Wisdom is expressed, therefore, in every way on every world, in every dimension, on every plane, within the capacity of every mind, and within access of every heart's desire. That is because wisdom exists. It does not belong to any one man or to any one world. It does not belong to the deeper truths or the greater mysteries. Wisdom is. Wisdom is what it is. It is its own entity-ness. It is a frequency. It is that which is alongside or apart from all things. Were every world cease to exist, 
wisdom would still be. If the universes ceased to exist, wisdom would still be. If every deity or thought or idea or ideal that you believe is worthy of attaining ceased to be or were destroyed in one process or another, wisdom would still be. Is wisdom the same as God? No, it is not. Is wisdom supreme? No, it is not. Does wisdom reign above and beyond all things again? No, wisdom is. It is expressible, usable, difficult to define. So we continue in our explorations so that you will come to know it, recognize it, receive it to the degrees that you can. As we have said, then, wisdom is. It exists in all worlds, in all planes, in all dimensions, to the degrees that it does. But wisdom has to do a bit with the degree of declination of earth and sun. In other words, to the degree that each plane or dimension is able to receive light, reflect light, the quality of wisdom upon that plane shifts and changes. How much can be accessed or held or discovered? It changes. So that every, then, quality of every dimension can be expressed within a quotient of wisdom which is unique and different in every way. So this has very little to do with whether it is fair or not, right or wrong. It simply has to do with how it is expressed, world by world or dimension by dimension. The higher the dimensions and the planes, well, the greater wisdoms that is accessible. You may, if you like, even find a correspondence with this with weather or patterns. If you will move to a certain elevation, there may be a small amount of snow on the ground, for an example. If you will move to the higher elevations, it is simply a fact, a reasonable one, that there will be greater snow at higher elevations. It is the same with wisdom. In the higher planes, there is a finer quality of wisdom that is available or accessible. To further define what it is not, it is not intelligence, it is not perceptiveness, it does not depend upon age, it does not increase with age or with superior reasoning, it is not cultural, not societal, it is not interpersonal. It has little to do with religious acumen. No amount of training or degree attained will make one more wise than another, for these are other determinations of knowledge or human attainment. However, there are ways in which one can pre-suppose oneself to attain higher wisdom. When one improves and generates well-being within oneself, this presupposes a right to wisdom or the path to wisdom. When one improves and generates one's self within one's own worldly environment, this also pre supposes but does not predetermine access to wisdom. There is, however, a consistency that can be found within certain beings that are presupposed to attaining or receiving wisdom. There is an internal and an external consistency that is sincere in its effort as well as its desire. Effort and work are not the same. Effort on oneself and working on oneself again is not the same. However, 
They assist one another. There is a relationship with one another. So the desire to effort for oneself, an internal and external consistency that is sincere in combination with the improvement and the general well-being within oneself and one's environment, these contribute to the drawing together of wisdom. Wisdom can be attained by the breath. So it is not necessarily a thought. In other words, no matter how much information or knowledge that you attain, it is not necessarily access to wisdom for a simple breath would align you with the state of wisdom in which you would draw from that essence the essential qualities of wisdom. Development of the character of oneself also contributes to the drawing of wisdom to oneself. A clear character, a clear knowing, a clear sentient being has greater access to wisdom than one that is not. Again, there is no finished product here. So it is in the development of the character. Again, it is in the journey itself rather than in the destination. Imagine that you have lived long and arrived at what you might consider a final destination where you would hope to experience expect to find wisdom, it may or may not find you there. Just as likely one that is just setting out on their journey, but there is a place of development within them that is already open. There is already a capacity for the character of the self to be clear, to be clear, sentient. There is already a receptacle by which wisdom can be received. And in essence, this would promise greater success than one that has journeyed long and far or lived even in the most beautiful or charitable ways. It can be said that if human life preordains ignorance and unconsciousness as the human dis-ease, well, we could say of that that wisdom is the antidote. It is the arbitration of that which is just, just within reach, just within. I will tell you that if you must make or state or argue a case in favor or against something or someone, it may be based upon knowledge but it is not based upon wisdom because wisdom is not transferred in this way. Wisdom is not bestowed, but it can be said to be placed within reach. It is not taught, it is not given, but it can be established within oneself. It is equitable. Wisdom is equitable which is not the same as to say that it is fair. A wise man may believe that it is fair that he has attained wisdom, but a wise man would only be able to access that which is equitable within his reach. You see, what has he attained after all? How much wisdom has he earned for himself? Perhaps it may be at times that wisdom is lent to a man. And then, once it is used in the moment, it is given back. Wisdom is not something that one keeps at one's bedside or even within reach day by day. Wisdom is. It is free from hatred. It is free from fear. It is not balance, but it has the ability to restore balance. For wisdom brings good keeping to all those who seek it or access it. 
it is fair to say that those who seek wisdom will find it. But where they find it, and how they find it, and under what circumstances, this is also unique, and to the moment, and to the individuals. Upon the third dimension, it is said that it can be acquired through a variety of hardships, even ordeals that involve pain or self-sacrifice. But here I tell you, as I have in other subjects, that this is not necessary. This is but an older human term relative to the idea of work, relative to the idea of human beings organizing themselves as workers, a colony of workers, a thought of long and longer ago. But perhaps it will be appropriate in this moment then to share such thoughts with you regarding how human beings came to be called Homo sapiens. For the very word sapiens means wise. It means learned. In fact, it means full of wisdom. And yet, that is not necessarily what human being is. When human being was named Homo sapiens, I tell you, it was not the original thought in mind. In fact, it was that human, Homo, was to be named Diurnus, meaning man of the day, meaning new man, meaning man that is evolving or has just emerged upon the new day. Homo diurnus is and was a more appropriate term. And yet, those who wish to make a distinction between the true animal kingdom and the human kingdom believed that to say Homo sapiens then, well, it was a way to say that they were wise, wiser than the animal kingdom. Well, that is to be seen yet although all of my hope and faith is with humanity. Homo sapiens, then, is what humanity is in the process of becoming. It is a seeker of wisdom, and there will come a moment when it will also be a keeper of that wisdom as well. Wisdom, then, to continue is the creative agent in all things. In all things. That is to say that wisdom always exists in every moment, at every time. Whether one attains wisdom or not, it is the creative agent in all things. Wisdom is eternal. It is part of the one. It cannot be divided. That is why I tell you, that even if all of the worlds ceased to be, wisdom still would be existing undivided. And there are different kinds of wisdom as well. Perhaps it could be seen that there is hidden wisdom and personified wisdom. Personified wisdom is what can be attained. It is what you can hope to attain in one life. It is the part that you can hope to keep for yourself. It is the active principle aspect of wisdom that you can employ, that you can share and teach and learn and seek, to discover and to bring into emergence within you the personification of wisdom, homo sapiens, personified wisdom. And then there is the hidden wisdom, that which always is and always will be, undivided, and, well, attainable, but only in the moment. Attainable because you are seekers of it. Attainable because it exists in all things, in all possibilities, as the creative agent in all things. And the part of you that seeks and wants and desires will always, always, always seek the hidden wisdom in all things. The answers to the riddles of life the solutions to the problems, 
the answers to all questions as they are offered. The hidden wisdom, then, is part of all of life itself. How does one apply for wisdom, then? What is the application of the device of wisdom that does not exist and never was? Well, herein one finds the principles themselves, as we described earlier. One of the principles, then, is desire. But it is a desire that cannot come from need. It cannot come from want. It must be desire for the purity of desire itself, for the simplicity of discovery, for the sharing of the wisdom, for the partaking of it, for the participating in the perfection of all things that are wise. It is wisdom that will reveal itself then. Wisdom reveals itself to the seeker who sees. Therefore, in order to receive wisdom, you must also then at least be able to peek between the veils, to lift the veils of life, to see what is behind them, beyond them, the curiosity of life itself. It cannot be for personal gain, and it cannot be for worldly assistance. What does that leave then? It leaves only that which is, only that which is seeking for the purity of seeking, for that which exists beyond all knowledge. When one no longer quests for knowledge, there is wisdom. Wisdom then is received. It is shared. One finds wisdom at one's feet, at the feet of the master, as it is said. At the feet of the master, of the master word, or the master code, or the master thought, or the master teacher. See, it is not necessarily that it must be the master man teacher. Life itself is the teacher. One finds wisdom at the foot of the mountain, at the mouth of the cave, where the wonders exist and where the wonders cease. Does it seem very hard to attain? Does it seem as if it is out of reach for you or for the average being? Here I tell you no, and if I have put it under these terms, if I have made it unattainable for you, then I beg your forgiveness in having presented it to you this way. In fact, I have come to make it as simple for you as possible. In other words, I have come to say that it is not the knowledgeable man that is the only one that has access to wisdom. It is not the high or the mighty or the rich man. No. In fact, the message here within these words is that it comes in the simplest moments, from the humblest of hearts, yes, from a charitable heart and a charitable thought, but also from one that is transparent, from a clear thought, from one that seeks the next word, the next truth, and the next pearl of wisdom. It is not a pearl of great price. In essence, it is a pearl that cannot be had at any price, meaning that it cannot be bought but it can be shared. If you wish to find wisdom, then look to all of the faces of nature and you will see that it exists there. You will see that it is in the smallest seed, that it is in the ability of life to generate and regenerate itself. It is in the ability to birth life as a thought is birthed, so it is in innocence. It is in beauty, but in the beauty that nature will reveal to you. In the beauty that is carved on the face of a mountain, rather than that which is hung in a three-dimensional picture upon a wall. Wisdom, then, is yours. 
In essence, wisdom is what you are. For as wisdom is the creative agent in all things, it is also in you, it is part of you. Inseparable from what you are, from what you think, from what you do. Therefore, you are wisdom, but not in the ways that you think. I beg you here then to begin to separate wisdom from the word spirit or spirituality as it is often linked together. I beg you to separate it from its leading from information or from knowledge, for this is also untrue. It is wisdom that surrounds you. It leads you. Wisdom is the key that fits in every door, in every lock, for nothing could bind it or keep it from you. Wisdom is near you, next to you, a part of you, brought to you. You may ask for it, but your quest must be in simplicity, in innocence, and again, based upon the perfect desire. Wisdom, then, is what will guide this next moment in life, for it is all worlds that follow the path of wisdom, and it is the path that the earth also follows now into its next world and its next creation. Wisdom being the creative agent in all things, wisdom is creating our next world. The next world that you breathe life into is a wise one, is a golden one, is an innocent one. It is a pearl, it is a sun, it is golden. Wisdom also then comes from the sun itself shining upon you each and every day. Even generated by the sun and its rays of light, wisdom comes to the earth. Wisdom is, wisdom is part of all. Until the next moment, sweet ones, I bet you a very golden wisdom-filled life. I will greet you soon again with yet another topic of discovery, of personal interest, of development of the soul, of the being within you. Know that all that I bring to you is to inspire, to ignite, to transform, to coax forward, to align, to plant seeds that will bear fruit now and for many, many days ahead. I bid you good day.